Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware review of the brand new QNAP TS451DEU. Now this is their brand new half depth rack mount for small and medium business. Although home users might see advantages in this, I recommend if you're a home user there are other devices out there. This is their dual core business orientated rack mount. It arrives with hardware and software features that a lot of you who you currently utilize cloud services will certainly see the advantages in. It arrives with upgraded internals that we've seen over its predecessors. It arrives with 2.5 GBE M2 SSD SATA bays in sight for internal improvements of your speed and ultimately arrives with all of the modern generation of QNAP NAS's hardware available to you at the beginning, but with the added ability to upscale and improve it as your network requirements need. Now, it's not all perfect. There are some things about it because it's a more affordable device and has picked very much that middle tier there of business that may not please everyone. Today, we're going to do our hardware review. We're not gonna to talk too much about software, but I will highlight that this device does arrive with great support of QNAP's QTS platform with surveillance applications in QVR Pro, virtual machine applications in Virtualization Station, Container Station, and Linux Station. Alongside that, there are lots of business-led file management apps such as File Manager, QFiling, and QSearch, and AI-powered cataloging in the form of QMaggie. Also, there's the great multi-tiered backup um, tool, Hyper Backup Sync 3, along with improved applications coming very soon with regards to um, cloud-based virtual machines and localized virtual machine backing up, duplication, and snapshot rollback. There is lots of features and functionality for lots of business users out there who currently take advantage of Dropbox and Google Drive and more, and paying a monthly subscription, and then a year, two years, three years down the line, you haven't really got anything physical to show for it and you end up needing to buy one of these anyway for all of your data so first and foremost here's what you get in the box it's quite a large box we've chucked it out of shot there but inside you've got your quick start installation guide for setting the device up for the first time you've got your extended warranty information because the device arrives with three years of manufacturer's warranty that can be upgraded to five you have got screws and handles because this is a rack mount device and you may have already in your business environment, um, a rack cabinet that you want to include this into. On top of that, you've got heat sinks for those internal SATA M2s, both of which can be utilized for raw storage or caching, if you so choose. You don't have to fully populate, you can use this one, add another drive later. You've got information on the existing three years of warranty, so the other leaflet about extended. This is very much about your standard three years warranty and what it covers. You've got screws for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media, along with two RJ45 Cat5e cables for your LAN connectivity. Now, that's all you get with your box, and you also get a PSU cable inside there because this has an internal PSU because it is a rack mount. Now, the device does arrive with some hardware that, although to the general PC box builder, is going to seem a little underwhelming. You have to remember, this device is going to be on for days, weeks, months, or sometimes even years at a time. It is geared towards file management and file handling. You can't really compare it against the latest Intel Core i9. One, because of the price difference, but two, and more importantly, those are designed for short bursts of rendering. You would use processors like that in a PC environment, at least, for just one-off tasks that need to be formed and, and completed one after the other. You generally shouldn't have a PC on for days, weeks, months, or even years at a time. And that's why you find more efficient processors inside these devices, because they are geared towards one task of data management, and they don't need those higher end CPUs also, because they would generate far more heat and electricity than is needed, so they'd be a bit squandered, and also they would push the price point of this way, way higher. So this device arriving at around 550 NICA, uh, give or take, and that's without your local VAT, whatever country you are in the world. Um, that will mean that if you are going to buy this and fully populate it, you're looking about a grand uh, of spending there. But of course, you don't have to fully populate the device. You can pop in one or two hard drives if you so choose. And then from there, you can gradually add drives as you see fit. You can expand the storage. There's a range of QNAP's own expansion devices that connect via USB. 
and those expansions cover everything from hardware RAID where they take care of their own RAID management to JBOD solutions where the CPU of this device will handle the RAID. But that's something we can talk about another time in our expansion series. We've got lots of expansion videos to come, but let's take a look at this. Now, if we look at the front of the device, we can see those four bays of storage, lots of ventilation there. It does give you quite a lot of bang for your buck there in terms of capacity uh, in the modern age. This device does support the very latest 16 TB, uh, that's 16 terabyte Seagate Ironwolf NAS hard drives. And that means you're looking at 64 terabytes of raw storage potential here without your RAID. Once you introduce RAID, things are gonna change a little bit. You can get up to 48 TB in a RAID 5 and 32 TB in a RAID 10 or RAID 6. And of course, a RAID 0, that's all of your storage right there. Now, the trays are metal in design. I love nice sword effects there. Uh, and there's screw holes for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media. No click and load on this device. It is metal all the way through. Um, the device also inside, as mentioned, has two M2 SSD bays that allow you to utilize those for raw storage, if you like, just as you would your hard drive to their own RAID, or utilize them as caching to further improve the internal operations of this device when you are accessing those hard drives, acting as an area of buffering and cache to help manage files, and particularly common access files or files that are accessed from multiple devices. Now, it is a rack mount, so it's gonna generate a little more heat and a little more noise than a desktop device. It is chiefly designed to go inside a rack cabinet. If you don't have a rack cabinet, it's still a half depth, quite compact device here. Um, we have got LEDs there um, based on the top for each of the hard drives, as well as the two internal M2s and a power button there for booting the device for the first time. It is a completely contained metal environment with plenty of ventilation on the rear. So if we look at the rear of the device, we can get some idea about the internals of this. Now, we have got those three fans. One of them is the fan for the PSU for keeping things lovely and cool inside. The RPM of that fan can be adjusted manually if you choose. You shouldn't really do that. Or you can let the system adjust its uh, rotations per minute up and down as the system needs. If things are getting hot, it'll increase the airflow. But again, you can configure it if you're worried about noise. But this is a rack mount. It's going to make noise. Fan's not going to make any difference there. On top of that, you've got two more fans here. Now, these two fans are directly connected to the PSU via a SATA data, uh, sorry, SATA power cable, and they work with the system to once again keep things lovely and cool as and when needed. They work in conjunction with passive airflow on the front of the device. And if we look at the back, we can look at some of these ports. Now, I did touch on this in my unboxing video, but these USB 2 ports are one of the two things about this device that I'm not a fan of. I like the USB 3, and we're going to talk about these puppies in a bit, but these two kind of annoy me. Um, QNAP has utilized USB 2 in other devices previously. It's not new. Let's face it, USB 2 has been around for a very, very long time. But in most QNAP NASs where I see a combination of USB 3 and USB 2, I look at the USB 2 and I think, ah, oh, cool, use a keyboard and a mouse. Great, have a KVM set up have a standalone surveillance solution, a standalone VM, something where I've got a direct input into this device, but there's no HDMI here and there's no PCI upgradability. That means that this device and those USB 2 ports are very lacking. I mean, unless you're going to utilize these for like a printer or for your UPS, or um, if you want to utilize them for a dongle, a wireless dongle, some of the um, one, um, 801N, ones, then there's not much you're going to do with USB 2. Whereas this device, you can, you know, attach external USB storage for backups. You can attach those expansion devices to add more drives to those. You can add supported 5GBE to USB 3 dongles from QNAP themselves that allow you to add 5GBE to this. What I'm saying is, USB 3 is damn useful on this. So what the hell are these doing here? Because they can say about, you know, if they, you put a bigger and more expensive PSU, they'll have to ramp the price up. But USB 2 to USB 3 now, it must be at a price point where it's negligible at best to see the benefits of USB 2 on this device. Now, let's bring it back. Let's talk about those LAN connections. We've got RJ45 here, but 2.5 GBE. So if you're running a one gigabit Ethernet environment, which is kind of the default across most devices, 
you're going to be fine. This is completely backwards compatible. You're going to get one GBE out of both of those ports, link aggregate them. You're looking at two GBE, so between one and 200 megs, depending on which one of those you go for, which is great stuff. If you've got a managed switch, even better. So it means that, you know, the number of users talking to this device, they're sharing that connection. So if you've got two of them, you can ramp that up a little bit. But these are 2.5 GBE. That means that this device supports 250 megs per second on each of them, which can be link aggregated for up to 500 megabytes based on the media you use inside. Now, remember, if you're using this in a business environment and you have multiple users storing their files, doing backups, accessing surveillance, ultimately interacting with this device with their own security credentials and more, they are sharing that network connection. So it doesn't matter if all of them have got one GBE each. If they're all connecting to the same NAS and this NAS only had one GBE, they're sharing that 100 megs between them if they're accessing at the same time. So improved external network connections is a broader bandwidth for multiple users to work with. You just have to make sure the rest of your network environment is ready for these connections. Now, I said there was two things about this device that annoyed me a little bit. The other one is, of course, the lack of PCIe upgradability. They have added those SSDs inside, which is good, and you can use those for raw storage, but they're not NVMe. They're standard SATA, and I got used to the idea of QNAT as is now almost all arriving with a PCIe slot, two times two or two times four. So its absence here confuses me a little bit because you might have used that PCIe card anyway for M2 SSD caching. You might very well have done that, but you might not have. And the ability that you could have added a 10 GBE port or could have added a Wi Fi 6 upgrade card or could have added any number of things. It's a little disheartening. It's a great device and very well constructed. But just that business of USB 2 and that PCIe slot stuff leaves me a little underwhelmed. So let's have a look about the inside. I've already removed all the screws in advance. So we can take a good look about what the inside of this device looks like. Now if we bring it there so the light doesn't go absolutely nuts and I don't block the mic too much. We can see that internal PSU all working there, and that internal PSU powers the fans and supplies power to the board and all of those individual hard drives. In the middle, we can see those two M2 SATA SSD bays there for adding for caching or raw storage. We have got the CPU underneath this heatsink here and that DDR4 memory. There's plenty of ventilation for all the drive media, but now let's talk a little bit about that internal CPU and memory. Now, this arrives with a J4025. It's a 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.9, but that is a two core CPU. It supports 4K transcoding. It has AES NI encryption, the faster and higher performing uh, uh, 256 bit encryption. Um, on top of that, it also arrives with a great floating point to mo manage multiple tasks at once. And compared with its predecessor in the J3000 series, because this arrives with a J4000 chip, it supports DDR4. Now, it arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 2400 megahertz memory by default, but it's a two port system and it supports up to 8 gig officially with two 4 gig modules. But we have experimented with this range of devices and found that it has supported up to 32 gigabytes of two 16 gig sodium non ECC DDR4 memory modules that's not supported by QNAP and not supported by Intel and their CPU but we have got it recognized and we are able to uh, allocate that memory to different tasks it's something to worth bearing in mind there but again might not be perfect I'm only recommending you do that it may invalidate your warranty so I'm only recommending you do that if you're happy with your backups already in place which you better have and understanding that it's not officially supported but Overall, I am very happy with this device. It brings a lot to the table. And with the exception of the USB 2 ports and the lack of PCIe, it's probably one of the better half-def rack mounts I've ever seen. I've seen Synology try again to try and bring out these half-def rack mounts. And they've done a few good versions of it, but they always arrive with slightly lackluster hardware in the CPU department and definitely expandability. And their network ports are all 1GBE. They have the PCIe, so they've got that going for them. But... I still quite like the QNAP offering here. It brings a lot more hardware to the table and more future-proofing. But there are arguments on both sides. Why don't you let me know below? 
This has been my hardware review of the TS451DEU. If you are interested in learning more, do go to the links in the description, both to NASCompares and Span.com, and click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe if you want to learn more about NAS throughout 2020, and I'll see you next time.